Hey everybody, Jessica Ostrom here, and I wanted to introduce a new workshop. I was not planning on doing a workshop this year at all. I am biohacking up a storm in my physical biohacking studios that I have opening all over the world currently. But this one has creeped in, and it has creeped in and through my biohacking process with my amazing clients and uh, the amazing people that I've had that privilege to take through this cutting edge ahead of its time process. So this new workshop, drum roll, okay. What is our Achilles heel? What is our um, kryptonite? Hmm? Well, we say, well, it's love, right? But that's all we are. So how could love be our kryptonite? Well, I'm gonna take it a step further and it's not necessarily love because you are. It's being loved and it's sharing love safely, all right? So this workshop is about the alchemy of relationships, all right? Now for a very, very long time, I would not go near this topic because it is something I struggle with. All of my community knows how transparent I am. I have had a private uh, community of my alchemists in training for years now, and they know all my Jerry Springer wonderful relationship drama, because why not? I mean, I literally am a scientist and I am my own experiment. I am in the Petri dish. I am out there in physical reality, bumping up against things and I'm stubborn. So the way that I learn is through doing it, right? And how I know whether there's a wound or a trigger or some sort of unconscious pattern is to act it out. <laughs> so although at times been quite humiliating, I have kind of put myself on the cross um, intentionally and used myself as the dummy that crashed into the wall about a thousand times and a couple different marriages and four kids later. So am I an expert? Well, I truly believe that that word comes from kind of experiment, right? Experience, expert. And most of us who become experts come from failing at least eight or 2,000 times. So I definitely have the, the curriculum. And over the last two years, I really decided that this Achilles heel, this kryptonite was not fun. You know, having money and time and um, cool friendships and being able to go anywhere you want in the world and have a really awesome house and dress however you want and, you know, not really care what anybody thinks has been amazing, but you always kind of at the end of the day, I'm like, oh, that pile of laundry in my bed would be awesome if it was a person, right? Or, you know, that remote control that shares half the bed. But honestly, you know, when it comes down to it, really, really what I wanted to know was why, why the, the us, right, the audacity, the, the us I'm speaking of, the ones who are empathic and sensitive and loving and caring and kind by nature, have the hardest time in relationships. Why is this, right? Why is it that the more love that we are literally spilling over with is the, is the most difficult thing to be able to share safely and receive, right? So of course, scratch the head, back on the pounding block to throw myself back out there. But I also have thousands and thousands and thousands of client stories. So it's not just my story, right? I listen. That's one of my super superpowers is I'm a good listener. But more importantly is I realize that whether I'm talking to a client in Russia at 4 a.m. or I'm talking to somebody in Australia at 5 p.m., it's the same, excuse my language, same stuff, different day, right? There is the blocks, the same blocks that we all feel. And it's not just the relationship with the opposite sex or the same sex or the transgender sex or whatever it is that we're choosing. It is the relationship between ourself and the world, right? You're in a relationship with money. You're in a relationship with time. You are in a relationship with this body, whether you like it or not. And you are in a relationship with your home, your car, right? Your family, your friends, your associates, right? Your, your bosses, your coworkers, your neighbors, okay? And so 
depending on the level of intimacy that you have in those relationships will determine where and how that trauma or that rejection and abandonment buried in those feedback loops is going to show up for you, right? And it, I think it came from a silly comedy movie, but intimacy is into me, I see. And so the closer someone gets to you, the more you start to feel the wall, the, the fear, the audacity, the resentment, the questions. Isn't it interesting how the closer you get to someone, the more you feel like you don't know them. And the closer that they get to you, the more you feel like you don't know you. These are really important questions, right? And, and I have clients that have been married for 40 years and feel completely alone and isolated. Their partner knows nothing about them. They know only what they say and kind of fill in the blanks with the rest. I have clients that have been alone for, you know, half of their life. I've had clients who have had the narcissist. I've had clients that have been the narcissist. And, and it really is, no matter where we are in the world, it's all the same story. So picking up the pieces of my own tragic, you know, tragic shit show of relationships in the past. And finally, beginning this last year by biohacking, of course, starting to get it right, at least for me, and starting to see really clearly what it is that we truly desire versus what we're going for, truly being attracted to and what being in resistance of. And so I have created a very simple four-week interactive workshop that allows us all to get on Zoom and basically unpack our baggage in relationships. But this is not just about me sharing the alchemy of relationships. You guys know, you've been through it. You know what your patterns are in relationships. And some of you are very ready to get on the other side of your own stuff. Some of you are really ready to get your person or your partner's stuff healed. And some of you have some guilt and shame to resolve within your own kiddos or your own intimate relationships that are dependents. And this is going to basically show you the how. I'm a big how girl. And even though the how and the when is the universe's job, I'm playing the middleman broker, right? I'm playing that version of channeling the how. And that's always been one of my strengths. Now, how to do it in my own relationship? Well, I had to get out of my own way and heal some major childhood woundings that I had up here upstairs in my perceiver because your perceiver dictates your belief systems and your belief systems, they tattle to the rest of your body who they believe you are or what you've been allowed to be and have, okay? So a lot of the stuff going on up here ain't even true, but, right? We have some beautiful laws of attraction and resistance and reflection and projection that we have to take into account when we are getting in ourselves into a relationship. So let me ask you this, whether you're in a relationship and you want to get out of it, you are in a relationship and you want to be seen, heard, safe, and love. If you are not sure if the relationship that you are in is the one, if you are not in a relationship and would like to create one, if you are not wanting to create a relationship but wanting to create a relationship with yourself, this is your workshop. You see, it's, it's a one size fit all. And the reason why is because we are going to use alchemy in this workshop to discover your how. Your how is going to be different than someone else's. Your story, although time, relationships, health, and money, same crap, different day, is what we're all going through. The way that you're going to get through and use how you want and need to become in alignment of that journey is going to be very unique for you. And this is why eyes on your own paper, stop comparing, guaranteed, nobody's relationship behind closed doors is actually what you want, right? What you want is the relationship where you are allowed to be completely free and authentic. The relationship that you want is where you don't have to reject and abandon yourself for someone else's eggshell ability to make you feel invalidated for some part of you, right? So there are things that you judge about you, and then there are things that your partners 
and your family and even maybe your kids judge about you. And those are going to be in your blind spot as one of the things that law of resistance is using to basically manifest your wounding right in front of you. Okay. So alchemy of relationships, we're going to use everything in our toolbox. We're, it's the quantum alchemy. All right. It is the past, present, and the future. It is the circumstances and event as our biofeedback, as our guru. It is our body health and stability and energy flow. It is our astrology. It is our numerology. It is our sacred geometry. Okay. It is our genetics. It is our um, uh, routines, habits, choices, desires, goals. Um, it's everything to do with you. So if there was a toolbox that was like, that's you, then we're going to use that toolbox, right? And you're going to be able to pick and choose in this workshop as we go along to discover how, basically, alchemist to turn lead into gold. So whatever you're in or not in, you have choice and you have power. It's just about understanding who you are and who you are dealing with, okay? Everyone should be the center of their universe, all right? That's actually how abundance is created in the dimension, being the center of your universe. But that sounds narcissistic. That sounds like you're stuck up. Well, the universe doesn't see you as that. It sees you as paying attention. It sees you as appreciating. It sees you as grateful. It sees you as looking within. It sees you asking. It sees you showing up. So if you are not the center of your universe, right, then you're probably either using someone else to push away to try to be the center of the universe or you're facilitating vicariously through something else so that you can get the fields of the center of the universe, but you're not. Let me ask you a question. How many times have you felt like the center of the universe and then the one shows up? Or that's when you start getting attention, when you become your own attention, when you start to thrive, when you start to really do well. Why is it that then is when that imaginary or the magical person starts to come through who three months later feels like they've just ruined your soul, okay? Why is that? And why is it that we finally get the courage to step out in our authentic self and we are the most judged and attacked? Why is it that the people who are supposed to love you the most make you feel the most ashamed and guilty, right? Why, 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 why? So. Your questions as the player here is the what and the why. My job is the how and the when. We're going to pull from the quantum field of possibilities. We're going to tap in to your unique signature of all that you are, your alchemy. We're going to find your dark side and your light side. And I'm going to show you how your dark side isn't in play those first three months and their dark side isn't in play the first three months. And that's why everything is sex and bliss and abundance and joy. And, oh my gosh, I must have known you in a different lifetime and instant connection and love bombing and let's get married. Okay, that's why that is. Now, how do we know what their dark side is before we get involved? And three months, that's an investment. That's a lot of time when you're, you know, pushing 50. So when you are, are like analyzing this, this is also going to give you the tools to be able to find out who and what their dark side is before they show it to you. If you're with this person and you're constantly feeling blindsided or you're walking on eggshells, I will also show you how and what to do with that dark side of theirs and how to get to know it. Because again, dark is just the absence of love. It's the pain part of you. It's the one that's been rejected and abandoned. And that's all that is. All right. But when love starts to get closer to you, it takes about three months, then they start to hit those walls of the unconscious programming. They're not doing it on purpose and neither are you, right? Love is still at the threshold. It's still a possibility. It's still a gateway. Now you always have a couple of options in three months. You can fight, flight, right? 
You can friend it, you can fawn it or apologize to it, or you can freeze. And so think about how you are showing up in this new relationship, in this old relationship, in this situational ship, in this divorce, in this, you know, whatever story you're in. Maybe you're polyamorous, maybe you're polyamorous and you've got six different triggers. Who knows? You're brave. Okay, but in this particular scenario, we're going to work off our two points, right, our waves and particles to really understand who we are in relationships when our dark side gets triggered or our trauma gets triggered, how to deal with us and getting to know their dark side, unconditional love, right, and how to deal with them to move back into safe alignment. Because ultimately, darkness has to be integrated. It has to be loved. It has to be allowed. But at what expense, right? Well, I know I'm supposed to love their dark side, but that means I have to reject and abandon myself. Not anymore. Let me show you how we can do this in four weeks, right? You're going to have one, one time a week with me. We're going to really unpack everything. And then throughout your week, you're going to practice, prepare, play, practice, prepare, play. Oh, and posture. You're going to get into character of who it is that you truly are. I'm going to give you all of my hacks over the years, all of the shortcuts I've learned. And I'm going to give you what hasn't worked, my failures. And I'm also going to give you the successes that I have created in my reality and also helped hundreds of other clients as well. So I hope you join me for the alchemy of relationships. I think that if you're going through my biohacking program, this is going to be essential for you because again, you're coming in as the caterpillar and you're leaving as the butterfly. And what happens if your husband doesn't like butterflies or what happens if your girlfriend isn't a fan of you flying and being free or something like that. So this is a great workshop to do before, after, during, and it is my gift to you so that you have tools that you can pull from as we move closer to love because we are hitting that threshold of the root awakening and the catch 22, but love's supposed to win here. Love's supposed to be the key, the ticket, the, the holy grail. And if we can never let it in, then we're not really gonna be able to create from a place that is this heart connection that is telepathic, that is timeless, okay, that is unconditionally loving. And so it's not about losing yourself for someone else. It's about win-win, keeping everything, keeping you and allowing them. And it's not that hard once you really start to understand what you're dealing with, who you're dealing with, how you're dealing with it, when you're dealing with it, and what to do, all right? So join me for that. Also, um, if you guys are interested in our Spain or our Ireland biohacking retreat, we have a couple of more spots. I believe we might be full in Spain, but I do believe that we have a spot or two open in Ireland, and that's going to be in Malahide, Ireland, which is a beautiful beach um, town close to Dublin. It's fabulous. There's a castle right next door, of course, right? Because that's how we roll. And we're going to be taking our our caterpillar to butterfly effect on the road. So if you can't make it there and you are in the U.S., get here. 2023 is going to be the year of you building your foundation. And I hope that you know the building materials and the blueprint that you want to build from next year. Otherwise, you're going to have to see what someone else is doing and help them build theirs. So join us here for our workshop that's coming up and make sure that you get booked for your biohacking um, integration program. It will be the best investment that you give yourself because you've already done 99.999% of this work and you are aware enough to get yourself in trouble, which means you're aware enough to see the things that you're doing loops and you're probably sick and tired of it because I know I was. All right. So I will see you guys on the flip side in the quantum field for some alchemy of relationships. And we are going to start getting some of this love stuff and keeping it for good. See you soon.